Hello, hello guys! Welcome back to another video! So I had asked you guys to vote on the type of tutorial that you want to see for InDesign and the results came back to basic. For this basic tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this slide and this slide in InDesign. I'm choosing something that's fairly easy, quick and simple, and I'm going to show you some shortcuts and tools that I use as an interior designer when I'm in InDesign, so let's get started, shall we? First things first, I want to show you guys I have all of my images saved in the same folder. I have everything named. It's just better to have all of your files and images organized and neat when it comes to InDesign. I am going to go to File, New documents over on the right hand panel I always change the units to inches have the orientation to be a landscape and I like to have the 11 by 17 size because it gives me more room to have images and text um, rather than having it eight and a half by 11 but it's your choice I like to have 11 by 17 just to have more room if you want to preview the document you just go at the bottom here and click preview so you can see how it's going to look before you commit to it so then I'm going to hit create. First step that we're going to take is drag all of these images onto the document. And there's actually two ways to do that. I'm going to show you both ways just in case you um, prefer one over the other. The first way is a little bit more cleaner, I feel like, and a little more simpler. Go over to the left-hand side panel and click the rectangle frame tool or press F. And you're just going to click and drag kind of create these boxes, whatever shape that you want on there. These are going to be placeholders for your images. I'm going to click and drag and bring this accent chair, this coffee table, side table, curtains, and light. And when you drag these images in, of course they are not scaled properly. So what you can do is highlight all of those images, select it all, right click, Go to fitting and fill content proportionally. And voila! All these images are scaled now. You can see everything and it's just nice and clean. Now you may have noticed before, let me do control Z. And when you import these images, they look blurry. Now this is a setting you can change. I always change this because I don't like looking at blurry pictures. So go to view, go to display to performance and click high quality display. It just gets rid of those rigid lines that we're seeing on there and just makes the images much more cleaner. So I'm going to go back to fill content proportionally. So that's one way you can import these images. The other way is to just uh, manually click and drag everything on there. So I'm going to go and highlight all the images I want to import on there. You have to click each time until all of your images are shown. And you can see that this format, it gets a little crazy because when you import the images this way, it imports the images the original size. Um, so some images, images are going to be bigger than others. So that's why it's a little crazy this way. I used to do it this way and I just changed to doing the rectangle frame because it's just easier. I highlighted all of these images and I'm going to scale it down. Press and hold Control Shift. Keep pressing those buttons and then go to the corner until you see these diagonal arrows and click and drag while you're still pressing Control Shift. It just scales everything all at once. I don't like to see these margin lines and have all of these blue boxes showing all at once. So what I do is I press W and this shows you the preview mode. It just gets rid of all of the blue boxes and the margins. Uh, so if you do click or hover on an image, it will show the blue box. It just won't show all at once. I do want to point out that when you are scaling an image in InDesign, this blue box does not scale the image. This only pretty much kind of crops it. If you want to change the size of the image, you can either hover over in the middle, you'll see the circle, click on it, and you can change the size of the image, but make sure to press shift when you are scaling. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drag in the remaining of the items and lay everything out how I had shown you guys in the picture. If you wanna rotate something, just hover over the corners and you should see this little curved arrow pop out and you just click and rotate it. 
Now when you rotate it, it's just like a free form. There is no snap. To snap it to a 90 degree angle, just press shift. And look, it snapped to a 45 degree angle, now 90 degree angle. So I actually had shown you guys this sectional flip the other way. And easy way that you can do that is right click, go to transform and click horizontal to flip it to the opposite way. You can also flip it vertically if you need to, but I need to horizontally. And voila, that was pretty easy. Now you see this coffee table, I want this to be in front of the rug, but it's going under. Easy fix, all you gotta do is right click, go to arrange and bring to front. This vase and these leaves, I want it to be grouped and be one image instead of two separate images. So just right click and select group and now you have one image that you just need to drag. If you wanna copy an image, select it, press Alt and you should see this second arrow pop out with a black outline. Keep holding the Alt key, click and drag. So we have all of our images and now it is time to add text. Text is pretty straightforward. You can either click the T sign or press T. Click and make a box, type your text. And then you can also change the font size. And over in InDesign, you can change the spacing between characters, which is something that I really like. And it's this one. It's a VA with the arrows pointing horizontally. And you can see it's just changing the spacing. So I also had text on this side. I'm just going to copy this text box. So I'm going to press and hold Alt, click and drag, rotate this. I also had a line on this side. So I'm going to go over here, click the line tool. And same format when you're trying to rotate and keep a straight line, just press shift. That way it's a straight line. I'm gonna come up here, select the line weight. You can make it as thick as you want. To exit out of the command, I'm gonna press V, move the line, and adjust it accordingly. Now, I had my logo on this corner, and what I do is I apply the logo to a master page. So over on the right-hand panel where it says Pages, click, double-click on the A Master. Whatever you add on here, this is going to show up on all the images. And then to exit out of this master page, just double click on your other page that you've been working on. So if I want to insert a new page, it's going to have my logo on there. I am going to copy and paste this text and the line onto here. To make sure that when I copy this, it's in the same exact spot as this page, select those two items, press Control C, and then when you go to your page, press Alt, Control, Shift, and V. This ensures that you copy the item and it's placed in the same exact spot. That way everything is cohesive and clean and nothing is off by an inch. I am going to copy this line, so press Alt, rotate it because this is, the, this is going to be the arrows pointing to the floor plan. To change the color, I'm going to click on the line, come up here, I'm going to click on red, but I don't want it to be red, I want it to be orange. So double click on this and you can just adjust the CMYK. I'm going to, you know, just keep it at orange. I'm going to make the line a little bit thicker. There we go. Now let's say I want to have the option to hide the text. Go to your right hand panel. Go where it says layers and click new layer. This is going to be your text layer. So I'm gonna click on it, double click on it, name it text, say okay. So when you are creating a text box, make sure you are in the correct layer. That way you can hide it in the future. Now to toggle the visibility of the text, go over to this little eye icon and click it. And it hides the text, see how you can toggle on and off the layer. You can also lock the layer. 
So if you select your images and you delete it, these text box are still shown and they're not deleted because it's locked. So that's a nice thing about working with layers in InDesign. It, I feel like it's just much better and you can keep yourself way organized. Now, let's say you update this floor plan. So I am just going to open that floor plan and I am going to make this black and white. Save as and I'm going to replace this image. When you replace an image, in design is going to let you know. So go over to your links panel and when you click on the floor plan it's going to have this yellow triangle with an exclamation point. That's letting you know hey something's off you need to fix this issue. So because I just simply updated it I just have to right click on it and click update the link and it's shown black and white because I had um, changed it to black and white. One last thing I want to show you guys is if you happen to rename your file, let's say I just name this guide. InDesign is going to give you another update, another warning, letting you know, hey, something's off. You need to find this file because it's missing. When I click on this, you will see a red question mark, meaning this image is missing. And that's because you changed the file name. So any little change that you make to an image, InDesign is going to recognize that and it's going to let you know, hey, this needs some updating. So what I did is I just relinked it to the image. Now when it comes to exporting, go to File, Export, select your folder, name your file. So I'm just going to call it Basic InDesign Tutorial. Make sure it's Adobe PDF Print. Click Save. I don't mess around with anything here. I just make sure this is high quality print and then click export and here is the PDF. Well that is it for this basic InDesign tutorial you guys. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you leave this video feeling more confident and comfortable using InDesign for your interior design work. Comment down below if you have any questions or if you want to see other InDesign tutorials I'll be more than happy to share. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next tutorial. Bye!